my little droogies and only friends, my fellow, I try to stick my knee out while cornering in my car to wheel obsessed fanatics. Welcome to another episode. I'm Mini JP, and today we'll talk about the best full size cruisers in my collection. That is right, folks. Mini JP is rich and powerful and already bought all the bikes for 2020. Coming in at number 14, the Ducati X Diavel. An awesome looking machine that has a personality crisis. The X Diavel is half muscle bike, half cruiser, half sports bike, but all good looks. People say looks are relative, but those people are either ugly or stupid, so don't listen to them. For $20,999, you get this beautiful and original vehicle that produces 152 horsepower and 126 newton meters of torque from its 77 cubic inches V twin. If you want to be a snob in half, you can spend $5,000 more and you can go for the S version. You'll get little design touches and different wheels, but basically the same bike. Same engine, same chassis, same suspension, less money in your pocket. I love riding this bike with my new Marshall earbuds at full blast. Why? The only thing I can't stand is the exhaust note. Remember when I said this bike is half sports bike? Well, that's an issue. It sounds more like a Honda CB500 than a full-size cruiser. Aftermarket exhaust health, but not enough. That is why it's last on the list. Number 13 is for the new contraption on the block, the BMW R18. Now, how did I get one before the official release? Well, let's just say I know a guy. I'm still undecided if I love or hate this bike. 1802cc boxer twin that comes out of the engine block like a couple of stage 4 tumors, produce 91 horsepower and 116 pound feet of torque. This bike is the result of the Red Skull snatching Bill and Ted's phone booth, going back in time with modern technology and giving it to the German scientists of the 1930s. It's peculiar to say the least, but the biggest issue I have with this bike is the ergonomics. It's not a particularly comfortable bike. And for a cruiser, that is a problem. Just like my Harley Lowrider, the foot pegs are in a weird crunched up position, not forward like you'd expect. Now with the Harley, there are things you can do for the highway, like mount some floorboards. With this one, not really, not unless you hack away at the engine. I don't think BMW will sell a lot of these, but as a collector's item, it's going to be worth something 20 years from now. That is why I'm keeping mine stock. Next on the list is the Harley Fat Bob. One of the best looking bikes in the past two years, its industrial chick style caught my eye immediately, and I just had to have it. For $19,749, I got this Milwaukee 8 114 CI V twin that produces 94 horsepower and 155 newton meters of torque. The seat is one of the most comfortable things you'll experience on two wheels, but only for short rides. Its design gets your butt in one position and one position only. You can't move around and look for relief in longer rides. Another thing worth mentioning in the ergonomics department is the old Harley problem. The air filter is exactly where your knee should go, so you're riding asymmetrically the whole way. Your left knee to the tank, your right knee to the air filter cover. But just for the looks alone and the Harley premium quality, this fat bob is definitely worth that money. Number 11 is for the Indian Chief Vintage. I had to take advantage while they are still selling this design. The Indian Chief Vintage is one of the last bikes Indian is selling with this original Polaris design. You'll notice that the new Indians have different gas tank and overall chassis on all of their big twins lineup. For $20,999 I got this old school looking transportation tool with the 111 Thunderstroke engine that even though only produces 78 horsepower pushes out a whopping 119.2 feet pounds of torque at only 45,000 RPM. I love the look of my cheap vintage and wherever I'm riding I'll notice that everyone is looking at me. Maybe it's my awesomeness, but just maybe, it's the bike. This is one of those uh, bikes that is not for introverts. These uh, ones are like your dress heels. They are for special occasions. Even though they are practical for long distance touring, I would not recommend them for everyday commuting. The engine does tend to run hot, and they are pretty big to move around at slow speeds. Another Harley comes in at number 10, the Lowrider S. Like most of the Harley lineup, I did not buy this bike for anything else than its looks. I don't like the ergonomics, as I said, so it's not as comfortable to ride as my other cruisers, but no other ride makes me feel so much like a badass. Nico Bellic ain't got on me when I'm on my low ride rest. 
the Milwaukee 8114 CI V-Twin that produces 94 horsepower and 155 newton meters of torque also sounds more menacing when you look at your rear view mirror and see me coming. But the new softtail chassis of these new Harleys are not to be believed. If you ever ridden a Dyna or an old softtail, I recommend you go to a Harley dealer today, ask for a test ride or any of their new softtails. You'll be immediately convinced. The Lowrider S retails for $17,999. The British make their appearance at number 9 with the Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster. What a delight it is every time I ride my Triumphs and especially the Speedmaster, the only true cruiser the Triumph is building for 2020. 1200cc inline twin that produces 77 horsepower and 78 pound-feet of torque doesn't sound like a lot, but it's the way it delivers that power. It is all across the rev range, only $13,150. Number 8 is for the Moto Guzzi El Dorado. Another one of those bikes that I fell in love just by looking at pictures. The Italian manufacturer has been making the same model since uh, the dawn of time. And why not? And why fix it if it's not broken? And, the, and what's there to fix? For only $16,995 I got a 1380cc V-twin engine that produces 96 horsepower and 121 newton meters of torque at only 3000 RPMs. Best bang for buck if you ask me. Add in the awesome looks and you got yourself a winner. Not to mention, you also get a check mark on the originality column with this one. The only transverse engine configuration of today is used by Moto Guzzi, and it's quite a different sensation, like a mix between the BMW's Boxer and an Indian's V-Twin. The only issue I would have is the sound of the exhaust, it's just too, too quiet. I want people to notice me, that's why I bought the damn thing. The Harley Softail Deluxe comes in at number 7. Yes, a whole bunch of classic style cruisers in my garage, so what? This will be the last year that Harley produces the Deluxe, so I had to take advantage. The Milwaukee 8107 produces 6 horse and 109 pound feet of torque at 3000 RPMs, and I bought it for $18,399. Like all the big Softails, you don't need the top end speed if you got torque. These bikes are built for cruising. Number 6 is for my Indian Springfield Dark Horse, one of the first cruisers I bought. For $22,499 I got this menacing looking motorcycle with a Thunderstroke 111 that, as we discussed earlier, produces 78 horsepower and 190 pound feet torque. But you don't buy the bikes for the numbers, you buy them for how they make you feel. And this one makes me feel like I'm the meanest motherfucker on the planet. Mike Tyson would have to find a goddamn posse if he wants to mess with me while I'm on this bike. Put on a couple of bands and Heinz's exhaust and you'll guarantee to have your neighbors call the cops. And when they arrive, they'll be so scared of you, they'll ask for your forgiveness and arrest your nosy neighbors for being pussies. All of that and this bike also handles a lot better than you'd expect. You don't want to go canyon carving, but you could. At number 5 we have the Harley Sport Glide, one of the most fun bikes ever invented. Even though it's a nice cruiser, it has the name Sport on it for a reason. It's so nimble you forget it weighs 670 pounds. Every time I ride this I feel like I'm on my SV650. Harley did something special on this bike. It has the same Milwaukee 8107 that on my Deluxe. However, on this one it feels a lot more punchy. It also shakes a lot less and the riding position is more aggressive. And it just fills you with confidence. You want to twist that throttle out of every corner. This one has 86 horsepower and 146 newton meters of torque. The seat is also one of the most comfortable on the lineup. And remember that for $18,599, this is two bikes in one. You can remove the ugly little bat fairing and the saddlebags and get one of the nicest looking cruisers around. This bike you buy for the right quality, not for the looks, but the looks are there. Number 4 is for the Breakout, another one from the new Harley Softail range. The Breakout is another one of those bikes that is 100% sure what it is, it's not a cruiser, if it's a cruiser, it's too powerful, weighing less than the Sport Glide and carrying the Milwaukee 114 with 155 newton meters of torque. And if it's a muscle bike, well, it's not enough with only 95 horsepower. But for me, it's just perfect. I rode one with the Screaming Eagle Stage 4 and it was just annoying. The, the throttle response was too snatchy, not what you want in a cruiser. The 114 is just right. The 240 sized rear tire combined with a 35 degree rake 
looks like it would be a real problem while cornering. Not the case. It is obviously not the street rod, but it turns with no major difficulty. It is just so perfectly engineered that once I dip it into a corner, it wants to stay on that line even at low speeds. The seat is low, comfortable and wide, even for a fat butt, and it has a big lip on the back to support you when you decide to do a roll-on on the freeway. Believe me, you'll want to do a roll-on on the freeway. Starting our top three, we have the Indian Chief Dark Horse. What a looker. This is one mean looking machine powered by a liquid cooled Thunderstroke 111. 79 horsepower and 119 pound feet of torque from this mess with me if you dare motorcycle. When you ride a Dark Horse, you feel like a one man dominating army. Men get out of the way and women throw their panties at you. You obviously need some aftermarket Vans and Heinz for this one. The original exhaust is nice, but this one demands the loud pipes. At $18,499, you'd be pressed to find a better looking bike. There are a lot of aftermarket parts for the Chief line from Indian, but I can't find anything that will make this bike look better than it does. I'm keeping this one pretty much stock. The first runner up on today's list is the original bobber, the Harley Softail Slim. What a difference in the way it rides with the new Softail chassis. The looks did not change that much in 2018, thank god, because this is one pretty looking thing. But the ride quality sure did. Even though it looks kind of the same, the frame is completely different, weights less and stiffer, and it just handles better. It even absorbs the bumps better, especially while cornering. And at $15,999, it is one of the most affordable soft tails you can buy today. And this bike is just begging to be customized. I got mine with a drag bar from the Fat Bob, wide wheels and fans and how to start with. Don't empty Mini JP, that is the way I roll. The Slim comes only with the Milwaukee 8107 engine that produces 86 horsepower and 110 pound feet of torque. But for this bike, it's enough. And the number one full size cruiser bike for 2020 is, you guessed it, the Harley Davidson Softail Fat Boy, the terminator of bikes, the most awesomest, manliest of them all. You can grow a beard, own the fastest car, the loudest gun, the meanest and biggest dog, or you can own one of these. If you're a man over 50 and don't have one, let me tell you, you're not really a man. This Milwaukee 8 114 that produces 120 pound feet of torque and retails for $20,599 is the John Wayne meets Chuck Norris of motorcycles. People get out of the way when you're on the fat boy. Its presence is demanding. It looks huge and menacing. And the funny thing is, it's the most relaxing ride you can have. The seat is plush and spacious, even for the passenger. It's the manliest bike, but women can ride it with ease and they look good on it too. You can spend hours on the saddle and not worry about any aches or pains. Just relax, enjoy the smoothness of the chassis and the sound of the engine and wait for those perfect moments when you need to pass someone on the highway. No need to drop gears, just give a twist of the throttle and bam! Quite a sensation. That's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and leave your comment below. Which one will be your number one for this category? Until next time.